Hi everyone, Laura at Broken Wind, back in the workshop. I think my feet have maybe just about touched the ground after the excitement of last weekend's results for the Great Guitar Build-Off. There will be guitar builds happening again in the future, my cogs are already working, I've got, I've got some ideas planned, um, so that hopefully something will follow up in the not too distant future. But before that, it's back to the day job of musical instrument repairing. And I've got a lovely job on today that I think would be a good one to start showing you what I do and how I do it. I have a beautiful Yamaha custom clarinet in for a full repad, which is the works basically. Not quite restoration because this is quite new, it's a couple of years old and normally might be looking to do a repad this soon but the player gets his mileage on this and um, it's played all the time and he looks after it very very well however there are certain parts that are worse for wear and need changing so here it is or part of it um, for those that don't know on a clarinet it's made up of a lot of keys his top and bottom so they go together and there's another couple of bits on the top and bottom as well in addition but the notes are made by pressing different keys and the more keys you push down the lower the note comes out because you're lengthening the tube as it were for sound waves the pads are actually what kind of makes the little mini valve as it were you can see there like we're moving that one there you see the white bit under the silver that's the pad so the pad is a replaceable part and it is made up of a bit of there's a bit of cardboard in there and then there's some felt underneath it and then that's all encapsulated in a very very thin um, piece of skin can you see there I'll stick my nail in it there look it's fluffy it's full, actually falling apart the skins come up, apart and the felt is starting to drop down so I need to take take this all completely apart strip it naked as it were and get all those bits changed and just check there's um, cork generally can you see a bit here there's a bit of cork there and this is broken and coming off so each key will have a little piece of cork on it which either acts as a buffer um, or sort of sound dampener for when stop keys touching each other and or touching the body of the instrument and adding a little extra percussion in or the cork actually acts as a sort of regulator between two different keys to make sure certain keys close exactly at the same time so we'll need to change that as well and um, yeah quite a lot of work to do on it but I think it's going to be a good one to start this repairing video series. Start by stripping down the top joint um, as you can see there's a lot on it a lot of keys and they have to come off in a certain order because some are overlapping on each other um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it um, I have a couple, my way that sort of works for me um, I'm using this lovely little screwdriver I've got a, a lot of diff different little tiny size screwdrivers I'm a bit of a fan of those um, they always have a use in, in what I do here and also with the blades being so tiny you didn't do tend to wear them down quite well these this set I actually got given as an 18th birthday present um, from a friend of mine when they found out that I was off to go and study musical instrument technology and they gave them um, gave them to me and they are still going strong so thank you Jane good investment there anyway here we go I start up the top here Uh, yeah, and so on here on the clarinet there's different ways of holding the keys on um, there are different types of screws this one is a rod screw it goes all the way through there we go the key comes off so yeah and that obviously goes through so when I take the key off I then put the screw back in it so I know where each one it is you can get different boards and things that you can put the screws into to hold hold them so you know which screw goes in which key but in all honesty I find it takes up more space on my bench which is small enough already and I just don't find it necessary you put it back in the key where it is and then you job done there we go so a couple off and you can see the holes there now um, go around the back Oops. Each key also has a spring, depending on what job it needs to do. 
as to what kind of spring it has. So you can see here, let me point it out to you there. There, can you see that little, looks like a needle because it's actually called a needle spring. So this spring will go into, on the key, there's a tiny little bit there. Can you see? Try it, twist it around a bit there maybe. There. It'll just slot into there and hold it in the right position so that it then provides some levering. Or you get the ones like this, which are the spring is, itself is attached to the key and then just by putting pressure down on it that obviously provides the movement so there's a couple of options on most woodwind actually you've got use both options uh, should I do? no i think all woodwind have both yeah at least they have at least one of each type if not more um and this is the next type of screw there's a point on pivot screws so normally I wouldn't take it all the way out but I will just to show you normally I would screw this straight back in so it's in position and I can't lose it because they're tiny but I can show you there so you've also got the, the head of the screw oh see perfect example this is why I'm wearing a pinny this, a this apron isn't to protect my clothing as you saw in my guitar build videos I'm not exactly precious about my clothing in the workshop I'll wear something old and comfy um, but this pinny helps stop if I drop anything it helps stop it roll so it will catch in my lap um, and the bottom of the pinny has got a hem that's turned up to try and catch anything in it um, but there we are yeah there's the screw so you've got the head of the screw and then the screw thread and then this little bit that's tapered at the end and the once it's in position in what's called the pillar that bit of the instrument once it's in position the key then comes up and will sit and the key will have a hole in it at the end there so that then goes up and it will just sit on the screw like that and that pivots on it and that's how it's held in in position so there's another type there I'll put that back in a second. And, um, and then we're back to a rod screw. This is a um, what's known as a Bowen system clarinet, um, which most people would just know as a normal looking clarinet. Um, you can get German models, which are the, the key work layout is slightly different, and you can have simple system clarinets, which are older ones that have you know less what it says on the tin really they're simpler they have a lot less key work okay then you get oh this is a bit of a hybrid of screws the one that goes through this key some pliers to get this one up just some parallel pliers there Make sure you don't mark the screws on the way out, but they come in handy for ones that are being a bit stubborn off and if they've got some dirt and things in there. So this is a bit of a hybrid one because it goes through, what it does is it goes through this key using the um, rod side of the screw and then it goes through an, a second pillar and then it has a, a point on the end of it so it then goes into the other key there so it's a bit of a hybrid one. I'm actually a clarinetist that was my first instrument and uh, it's very much my instrument of choice I do play saxophone as well and um, I love love doing that but clarinets my definitely my favorite it's just it's so much fun to play and the genres in which you can play there's just so many opportunities everything from orchestral to, I, I play in a concert wind band um, called La Ronde Jersey, La Ronde Concert Band of Jersey. Look them up, they're fabulous. They're actually a registered charity and they do a lot of concerts here locally and 
are a fabulous group of, of musicians um, under our, our great conductor Charlotte who demands good things from us and they're just f fun to play with and really miss them during Covid. Um, anyway, yeah, you can do those kind of concert wind bands, you can do uh, uh, big band stuff, um, swing and jazz and oh, there's so many options with clarinet, it lends itself to multiple genres. Anyway, enough about that. Um, here there's a naked top joint. You can see all the holes where the keys should have the uh, pads closing. A couple of keys, keys? <laughs> a couple of keys on this. Um, you actually use your fingers as the pads. Um, so some of them, the pads, obviously where they go, and then um, these have actually got the rings on. So that's where your fingers go. And there's that key there that has no key at all. It's um, it's literally just your finger to cover the hole. So it's a bit of a, a combo of, of things. And these are, as you said before, but you couldn't probably see them so much, these are called pillars and they're basically the mounts that hold the keys in place. So there we have it. Um, each end, because of the way it is, you've got a, a little cork gasket there that would seal when you put the different bits on together. So there's top joint done, so that'll just go to one side, push those out of the way. And then we've got the bottom joint which has got less on it, but the keys are a bit bigger and chunkier. Um, and the pads are bigger because the holes are bigger down the bottom here um, as you get to the lower notes of the instrument. Um, these are used in the higher notes of the instrument but there's an octave key, um, well register key on the clarinet it's called, that you stick at the, uh, the top and it then obviously changes what's happening below it. Um, stick those on. can be a bit of a fiddly job, but I don't half enjoy it. It can look like a bit of a puzzle to people who don't know what's happening, but I've been doing this for a long time now, so... Right, I've got a key coming off here that's a bit stubborn, and it's because the spring's cut. So I've got a spring hook, which is basically a crochet hook, actually, for anyone who's into their, their crafts, and it's just... You can use it to just move the springs out of the way that are actually holding the keys in position. There's many a time I've caught myself on these needle springs. Not so bad on clarinet to be fair. Flutes are one of the worst because their needle springs are so thin. Um, that and oboes as well. They're got the, the thinnest of springs that, without realising, you're in the middle of cleaning or something and you've impaled yourself on one of them. So um, yeah, I have a stash of uh, plasters behind me because the last thing you want to do is get claret down someone's lovely instrument. And uh, I think it was a few years ago I went to my GP and got yet another tetanus shot and I think he said you're right Lloyd, I don't think you're going to need one again because I've had so many over the years of impaling myself on rusty brass instruments or whatnot. So be careful there. I don't suggest that you do any of this unless you know what you're doing. There's a reason why people train to do this um, because we know how to put it back together again. <laughs> um, there's there's nothing worse as a repair than hearing someone say, I had a go at, and you think, oh no. And don't get me wrong, I like puzzles, they're one of my favourite hobbies, but trying to undo what someone started to do when they don't know what they're doing is uh, an interesting job to do. There you go. Right, job done. So there we go, we have a naked clarinet, all the keys are done. So next job will be to clean everything up, clean all the keys up, clean these joints, probably put a bit of um, oil on the wood here just to help clean that up. And then we'll get into some of the mechanic bits of doing that. So I'll love you and leave you for now and get cleaning shortly.